everyone. My name is Megan Stone. I'm the Youth Outreach Librarian for the Fulton County Library System. I'm coming to you today from the wonderful Sandy Springs Library and we are celebrating Dear Day today. Drop everything and read. Um, April, which is April 12th. And when I'm looking to drop everything and read, I usually go for poetry because it can be short, it has a great emotional impact, and it's not a big time commitment. Look, there's just, you know, there's not a lot of words on the page. So if you just need something quick to read, I go for poetry. And I'm gonna be reading to you a little bit of Enchanted Air, Two Cultures, Two Wings by Margarita Engel. Uh, she's a Newbery award-winning author um, of uh, some of her other works are The Surrender Tree and The Poet Slave of Cuba. Um, this story tells about her life. Uh, it's a memoir. It's for young adults, but I think adults will really like this as well. Um, so she has um, on one side of the family a mother from Cuba. Um, on the other side is her father from California who is the son of Jewish immigrants from Ukraine. Um, and this takes place right uh, before the revolution in Cuba and then afterwards in her life and how having these two different families, two different cultures really impacted her um, as a child and as a young adult. So let me start uh, with the first passage. Let's get, let's get into it. All right, so again, this is Enchanted Air by Margarita Engel. And it's such a beautiful cover. All right, flight. The first time my parents take me soaring through magical sky to meet my mother's family in Cuba, I am so little that I can hardly speak to my island relatives, my abuelita, my old grandma, who still loves to dance, and her ancient mama, my great grandma, who still loves to garden, working just as hard as any strong young man. Already this island is beginning to seem like a fairy tale kingdom, where ordinary people do impossible things. Voice. Everywhere we go in Cuba, I hear caged songbirds and wild parrots. Somehow the feathery voices help me make my decision to sing instead of speak. And even though I sing in a voice more frog-like than winged, I do dare to sing. And that is what matters on this island of bravely dancing, hardworking old folks. More love at first sight. I fall in love with the farm where my abuelita and her ancient mother were born. My dazzled eyes absorb the lush beauty of a land so wild and green that the rippling river on my great uncle's farm shimmers like a hummingbird. All the dangerous crocodiles and gentle manatees deeply hidden beneath quiet waters. Surely there must be mermaids here and talking animals and pale humpback zebu cows and graceful horses that roam peaceful hillsides, moving as mysteriously as floating clouds in the stormy tropical sky. Learning many meetings. The memories that I carry away from these visits to the island are restful. Cool ceramic floors, tiles on a hot day, and an open air kitchen with roll up walls that are only needed during hurricanes. When the weather is fine, moths and birds fly in and out of the house, drifting freely towards fruit trees in the patio, passing the old women in rocking chairs who fan their faces, welcoming the sea breeze. Old women love fresh air, but they also afraid of eris, a word that can be a whoosh of refreshing sky breath, or it can mean dangerous spirits. No place on the map. After these those first soaring summers, each time we flew back to our everyday lives in California, one of my two selves is left behind. The girl I would be if we lived on mommy's island instead of dad's continent. On maps, Cuba is crocodile shaped, but when I look at a flat paper outline, I cannot see the beautiful farm on that crocodile's belly. I cannot, can't find the palm trees or bright coral beaches 
where flying fish leap gleaming like rainbows. Sometimes I feel like a rolling wave of the sea, a wave that can only belong in between the two solid shores. Sometimes I feel like a bridge or a storm. The dancing plants of Cuba. In California, all the trees and shrubs stand still, but on the island, coconut palms and angels' trumpet flowers love to move around dancing. Fronds and petals wave in wild wind. Climbing orchids dangle from high branches. The delicate leaflets of sensitive mimosa plants coil and curl, folding up like the pages of a wizard's book. Each time I touch their rooted magic. Maybe I will be a scientist someday, studying the dancing plants of Cuba. More and more meanings. In one country, I hear the sweet words of another. Dulce de leche means sweet of milk. Garapo is sugar cane juice. At home in California, when I speak boostful English, I can say that I fly. But when I make the same claim in Spanish, I have to say voy por avión. I go by airplane. Two countries, two families, two sets of words. And I am I free to need both? Or will I always have to choose only one way of thinking? First flames. At home in Los Angeles, when my big sister is struck by polio, I'm not yet old enough to understand ominous words like iron lung, quarantine, or eternal light. The candle our abuelita back in Cuba promised to ignite in honor of la Virgen de la Seridad del Cobra on one condition, that the Virgin of the Charity of Copper will agree to spare the life of Magdalena Madeline Mad. When Mad survives, and does not even need a wheelchair, the joyous news travels by telephone all the way to the island where a grateful flame begins to glow forever. Dad finds a job teaching art at a college near the Oregon border where we will live in a storybook house surrounded by a giant forest. Mommy tells me and Mad that our new home will be paradise, but Dad says we'll miss his parents my other grandma and my grandpa, the ones who live in Los Angeles and don't speak any Spanish at all, just English and Russian and Yiddish because they were born in the Ukraine, a place they fled long ago to escape violence. It's true that we miss them in the Northern forest where the air turns out to be far too cold for mommy's tropical mind. She dreads the fog, hates the gloom and fears the gray, missing blue. I love blue sky too. But I also love these enormous redwood trees and the crashing ocean waves on a cold, rocky coast. I love seeing green moss, orange butterflies, blue dragonflies. I love nature. I also love listening when my mother reads stories. Her reading voice glows with hot Cuban sun, even when the book is in English, a language with such strange spellings that for her, that for her, Certain sounds will always be mysterious. When mommy reads out aloud, all I crave is one more page, and then another, and the next. But I'm even more fascinated when mommy recites poetry out loud from memory, like the one by Jose Martí about growing La Rosa Blanca, the white rose, as gifts for enemies as well as friends. I don't know what it means, so mommy explains that it's a simple verse about forgiveness. All right, I think that was a great passage to read along. And you see, just in like eight minutes, we're already on page 16. That's why I love books in verse like this, Enchanted Air by Margarita Engel. Um, if you want to read this book yourself, you can check it out. Um, go to folcolibrary.org and just search for Enchanted Air. You can place a hold on it on the physical book or um, it's also available as an ebook on Overdrive. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, again, I'm Megan Stone, uh, the Youth Outreach Librarian for the Fulton County Library System. And I hope you guys have a great day and remember to drop everything and read today. Thank you, bye.